So this is Vodcast 5, and what we're going to be doing here is looking specifically at gravity. All right, why is it important? How uh, is it calculated? What affects it? Now, you should have already done the Discovery Lab, hopefully, that has gone through and discussed a little bit about how uh, different things affect it. But first off, let's figure out why it's important. So we've been through Kepler's three laws, and Kepler's three laws do a very good job at describing the motion of the planets. For example, we know that they're eccentric in their uh, shape. We know that uh, as they get closer to the sun, they move faster, and then they're farther away due to the uh, second law, uh, they go slower. And we also know that the time it takes to go around uh, is related to how close it is in Kepler's third. But what Kepler couldn't do is explain why. Why do the planets do this? And that's where Newton came in with his laws of motion. Uh, <clears throat> So that's where we're going to start here, using his law of gravity. And we'll get into in a, a discussion uh, later on uh, his different types of motion. So here's the big question that his law of gravity describes. If you've ever watched um, a hammer throw, all right, they've got that big uh, ball on the end of a chain, and they're uh, spinning around. And as they spin around, the hammer orbits around them. Okay, this is analogous to uh, the planets going around the sun. And what astronomers uh, had it, uh, for a question was, okay, if the Earth is not the center of the universe, but we are going around the sun at very high rate, where is the force or that chain that's holding us to the sun? Why don't we just go flying off? As you see in a hammer throw, as soon as that hammer uh, thrower let go of the chain, it goes flying off. All right, in a straight line. Well, why doesn't the uh, Earth go flying off into space? And that's where Newton came up with this law of gravity, and that's what it's used to explain. <clears throat> so let's talk about the uh, force of gravity. Now, in the lab, you should have already discovered that it's an attractive force between masses. The more mass you have, the more it pulls. But this is kind of hard to, to understand or to accept. A lot of students will say, well, uh, if that's the case, then I have mass and other things have mass, and why don't we all just get pulled together? All right. Well, uh, to prove that it is an attractive force between mass, I've got this little video here. And what this little video is going to somewhat recreate is called the Cavendish experiment. So uh, let's jump to the video, and I'll explain. So in this, what we have are two large steel balls. All right. Uh, shot puts. And they're balanced on this uh, big piece of styrofoam. There's a piece of string hanging from the center, all right, and that's suspended by this ladder. All right, there is a, a bucket of water under here that uh, will act to, uh, with a little fin, cancel out any motion. So we know this is stationary right now. All right, there's nothing uh, that's going to, no machine that's going to move it. And what is going to happen here, they're going to take two large uh, lead bricks. All right. Now those lead has a lot of mass. These steel uh, shot puts have a lot of mass. So if there is a force in here, what we should see is that these are attracted to each other and they'll pull together here and pull together here. And in an extreme time lapse, 15 x, what we actually see is that they are being attracted. All right. This is the force of gravity in action. It is very weak, which is why it takes so long, even in 15 x. And I'll reset it up and do it one more time. But again, the only thing that is causing these to move is the attractive force between the masses here. So this shows that it does uh, uh, attract each other, but it's very, very, very weak. That's why uh, students and objects don't just go flying together. Okay, it's very weak force. So anyways, it's affected by two things. It's affected by mass, and it's also affected by distance, as you saw in the lab. Mass is directly proportional. In other words, if I double the mass, I am doubling the force of gravity. That's very straightforward. And it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Now, this is the trickier one in your discovery lab. We saw that the farther away it uh, got, it did get weaker. But it didn't just get a little bit weaker or proportionally weaker. If I double the distance, it went down by the square of that difference. So if I double it, 
All right, it goes not down by half, but then half again. So that would be a fourth of the original force. So distance plays a much bigger effect on it. And this is the equation. Now this is the math part of it. So we're gonna break this equation down uh, and then we're gonna do two examples on this and call it a vodcast. So first off, F of G. All right, that is the force of gravity. That is how much, how strong of a pull it is. M1 is the mass of one object, and that must be measured in kilograms. All right, mass is different than your weight, so don't think this is the same thing. You can't measure in pounds, but in kilograms. And mass of uh, M2. All right, it doesn't matter which object you call M1 or M2. It does not matter at all. Uh, Again, measured in kilograms. D is the distance between the center of the mass. So if you're standing on the Earth, all right, the distance between you and the Earth isn't uh, just a meter or so from the center of you to the ground, but to the center of the Earth. All right, very important there that you go to the center of the masses. All right, measured in meters. And G, here the big G, is something that you haven't seen before. It is called the universal gravitational constant. It is a very, very small number, okay? This is just uh, getting across the fact that gravity is very, very weak. The units really aren't that important, so we're just gonna skip it and go on. So if we're gonna use this equation, all right, for example, you wanna calculate the gravity between the Earth and myself. We need a couple bits of information here. We need to know the masses, right? We already have G, which is the universal gravitational constant, it is never going to change. It is a constant anywhere between any two objects. It is, so mass of one, that's the mass of the Earth. The mass of the Earth is very big. Uh, my mass is only 84 kilograms, so relatively small. And the distance, this is the radius of the Earth in meters, 6,371,000, all right? Now, um, just put it into the equation and solve it. Here's the trick for most students. Putting this stuff in scientific notation, uh, you cannot just put times 10 into your calculator uh, and this exponent. You might run into problems when you have uh, scientific notation down here. So be very careful. If you don't know how to use your calculator, you need to ask. And you get something that I weigh, in other words, 828 newtons, all right, because it is named after Newton. Now, what if I were to calculate, say, my weight on the moon? We need all that information again. We need the masses, we need the fields, or uh, G, and we need the distance. So, G, mass of the moon, all right? And these will be given to you. 7.4 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. All right, my mass again. Moon's smaller. 1,737 is the radius. And if you plug it in, again, you get a much smaller number. All right. You weigh about a sixth of what you would here on Earth if you were on the moon, because it has about one sixth of the gravity. That would... So uh, that gives you a quick description of what gravity is, why it's important, and how to use it.